During our visit with Stanford University's Anthony Wagner to talk about his research using brain scans to decode memories, I took the opportunity to ask him about using brain scans for detecting lies. I described the lie detection experiment I'd taken part in. So I had my choice. I could either take the ring or the watch. And I took the ring and I put it in my pocket. And I went to a locker and I put it in a locker and locked it up. Hmm. Presumably nobody was looking at me while I did that. Okay. When you were um, choosing between the ring and the watch, how much time did you spend considering, say, the watch versus the ring? I don't think I took too much time. I think I decided even before I opened it up which one I was going to take. I think I thought I could hide the ring. Oh, that's Better interesting. Than the watch. So even so before I even thought about it before, even before the stimuli, yeah. you knew what your choice was going to be. Yeah. So you had in fact thought about it, and the ring was sort of central in your mind right. as the important stimulus. What do you make of that? That I might have thought more about the ring than you, I did the you watch. You thought you thought more about the ring. You yeah. had a set of rich memories about the ring that you didn't have about the watch. In fact, your memory for the watch is rather limited. Right? You're at that brief moment in time. You glance at the watch. You saw where it was in the drawer but you really didn't interact with it in any meaningful way. With the ring, you had this plan prior. Uh, you'd considered the ring as the significant stimulus. You went in, you chose it. You had to actually um, uh, engage with it, put it in your pocket, carry it over to the locker. So for the ring, it's highly meaningful for you, and you have a set of memories of interacting with the ring in a way that you just don't have with the watch. So is it possible, therefore, in your thinking that I'm, I might not have created a picture in my brain of lying, but a picture of the ring. That's, in, there's um, a couple of published studies over the last couple of years that suggest the, these um, induction techniques, these sort of interactions that researchers have subjects do before going in the scanner to lie. You show them the ring, you show them the watch, or the equivalent, depending upon the experiment, right? You show them the stimuli, and you don't have the person lie. You don't have the person tell the truth. All they have to do is press a button when there's a stimulus on the screen. There's still a difference in the brain response uh -huh. to the relevant stimulus that is salient, meaningful for you, and that you have rich memories about relative to the stimulus that you didn't really interact that much with. And yeah. Is it about deception or is it about attention, is it about memory and these other... How much attention you put on it might be what's showing up in the scan rather than whether or not you're lying. This is interesting because when I was thinking of doing to defeat it. I, was, I, mean, I always try to defeat the experiment. I'm a little right. competitive that way. So what I was thinking of doing, but I didn't do it, was to pick up the ring and then put it back and pick up the watch. Interesting. Maybe put it in my pocket. Right. Then put it back, take the ring. So put a lot of attention on both of them, actually, which is what right. I would have been right. doing. That's the experiment I would love to have done. Two stimuli, both of them, they mean a lot to you. You have, you have rich memories about them, or you at least have similar memories. Uh, in terms of complexity, et cetera, and then you go into the scanner, and that would at least help control for some of these alternative interpretations.